Hello and welcome. Today we are in the new tier 10 US aircraft carrier, the Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or FDR for short. I was given access to play her by Wargaming, for review purposes, that is to say, I still have to buy her if I want her on my main account, and she will be available for 33,000 steel. Now I will preface my opinion of the ship with the fact that I feel as though this ship is so unique that there is a lot more still to learn on how to play this ship, because there are many things that you can get away with on regular CVs that you can't do on the FDR. But I'm also sure that there are many things that you can do on the FDR that you can't do on other CVs. And I feel that it'll take some time for the community to figure out what those things are. So, let's go over what the ship has. In terms of strength though, overall, I would say that she feels competent enough. Maybe she will be quite strong, maybe even overpowered, because again, she's different. So it's hard to classify her easily, right? Because... Her planes have a lot of HP, they're almost double the HP that regular CV planes have at this tier. However, the planes are also slow, and they are incredibly clumsy, because you have to do most of your attack runs when you line them up from really far away. On top of that, because the planes are slow, you don't want to do one attack, then pull back. You want to do an attack, then turn around and strike again. However, when you do an attack like this, you can see that it takes 25 seconds before you can start your next attack, whereas I think it's something like 10 seconds at the most on the other CVs. This means that you can't just go drop, turn around and drop again. You have to drop, then loiter a little bit, then turn around, and then you can go do another drop. And one thing that people will see on the ship immediately is the fact that she drops an insane amount of ordnance. I just dropped that Hindenburg with 8 torpedoes. That's a lot. But you have to keep in mind though that the planes are clumsy. In many situations you can easily avoid the torpedoes or whatever strike the CV is doing or at least minimize the damage by a huge amount. Because look at it. If that Hindenburg had turned in a way where she would only take one torpedo or maybe two, she would have taken 6000 damage right there. But no, she has taken 6 torps. And she hasn't repaired her flooding, which means that my damage just keeps sticking up. So she has access to the same three types of planes. She has HE rocket planes, but she has a huge amount of rockets per uh, plane. Then she has torpedo bombers. These, I, at least they feel like they are midway torps, but I'm not quite certain. No, they're slightly worse than midway torps, but you drop eight of them. And then she has access to level bombers, which seem to drop something akin to midway dive bombs but you know in a level bomber capacity so think of the royal navy cvs in that sense i follow up my initial strikes on that hindenburg with uh he rocket planes you'll see them in action one thing i would like to note about these is that you have to start the attack run from really far away this is i think 4.3 kilometers which means that you will have incredible amounts of trouble actually hitting destroyers with these unless the destroyer is afk in fact, I'm not even sure you can hit AFK destroyers with these unless their anti-air is turned on because you simply won't see the destroyer in time to actually start the attack run. But anyway, these are incredibly strong against cruisers, especially cruisers like Salem's because they have 32mm of penetration and you drop two planes at a time and each plane drops 26 rockets. And they drop in a slight, in a similar fashion to uh, German rocket, uh, AP rocket planes. That is, they drop from fair, fairly low, so you have to, you know, line the drop up properly. However, this also means that you can uh, drop the upper belt on lots of ships, such as CVs, instead of hitting the armored deck. Okay, let's see. Ho let's hope that the island doesn't block me. Okay, the island did block me a little bit. But that's a lot of rocket plane. It's 23 right there, and the Salem took uh, quite a lot of damage there. I'm gonna now turn around. You still have the same 25 second uh, duration before you can do another drop. And then I'm gonna drop the Salem again, hopefully finishing her off. Now, I think that the reason why this ship feels so interesting to me is because this ship honestly feels kinda like CVs were supposed to be like. 
So you fly in, you do one attack, then you turn around, then you do another attack, and then, you know, you turn around again and do another attack, and continue on like that. Because the planes are slow, so you don't want to pull back immediately after one strike. You know, it's kind of interesting in this sense. However, I can also recognize that this is perhaps not the best type of design, because... Well, if you're isolated like this Hindenburg and Salem are, you're kind of food for the CV. I mean, what can they do to avoid these? At least if I had to pull back and come back with new planes, you know, the enemies would have some time to try to reposition or link up with some teammates, or maybe the enemy CV comes and drops them a fighter plane, or something along those lines, right? But because I'm doing the strikes one after another, it's kind of difficult for them. Now, I will note, though, that this ship or these this sh CV, these planes are harder to use than what you might be used to on other CVs. Mostly because they're slow, and this means that you need to usually dodge much more flak. And honestly, flak is very, very scary for this ship because you see you have all of these planes at the same time and you cannot dump them. By the way, the enemy is Z-52 just sank two of our battleships right there. We're, detonated one and sank the other with torps. But anyway, when you have flak with these planes, you have huge squadrons that you cannot dump beforehand, but if you run into a flak bubble, or even close to one because your squadrons are huge, you likely will get clipped by some flak bubbles. And when you do get hit by them, they are area of effect, you know, explosions, which means that basically all of your planes will take that damage. So if you run into a flak bubble, especially during defensive fire, you can just lose essentially all of your planes, or close to all of your planes, very, very quickly. And that makes it a tricky CV to play. Oh, come on, she survived 600 HP. And I can't go back to try to finish her off. It'll take way too long. I have to deal with this Z-52 that's in the B-cap that my team seems to be incapable of dealing with. We have a Smolensk and a Hindenburg and another Hindenburg over there. Go and Hydro him! It's not like I can really do anything against the Z-52, but I suppose my teammates simply don't know that. The FDR is quite poor against destroyers. The rocket planes are probably the best, your best bet. However, these are difficult to line up. Now, Dropping into smokes, they can work because they drop so many rockets at once, right? I don't know where the Z-52 is, but chances are she's gonna be somewhere within the drop pattern of the rockets there. And that was enough to actually hit her. And perhaps this will make the Z-52 think twice because I'll keep dropping this uh, smoke screen over there. Oh, our Smolensk decided that, hey, you know what? Instead of relying on the CV to go and deal with this destroyer, I'll just go sail there myself and hydro her, which is exactly what she did, and I'm pretty sure that Z-52 is gonna go down before I even get to do another drop. Yeah, goodbye. So, back to the CV. The main thing you have to watch out for is flak. The continuous anti-air isn't nearly as important, which is, again, makes the CV interesting, because dodging flak is up to your skill. However, this also means that in the hands of somebody that's really good at dodging flak, she ends up being very powerful compared to somebody who doesn't know how to do that well. Well, in that case, she ends up just doing not much at all. So, I'm gonna go after those two battleships over there. That Thundra and the Grosse Kofast. I'm gonna use these uh, torpedo bombers, mostly because I can easily land them from the side, or at least I should be capable of landing them from the side. But even though you might drop 8 torpedoes and be like, oh my god, that's insane, that's even crazier than Midway, I don't think this is actually worse than Midway, because I'm pretty sure these torpedo bombers deal 4200 or 4000 damage each, whereas Midway torpedo bombers deal, or torpedoes deal 5k each. So it'll be like 32k versus 30k, not that big of a difference. And you have to keep in mind that, um, you know, you have the 25 second timer, until you can do your next attack again, which I think make make them actually worse than Midway Torpedo Bombers. Essentially, with the FDR, you have to line up all of your drops from far away and essentially fly in a roughly straight line before you can actually do those drops. 
Think of like the atrocious, sorry, I mean the audacious with the level bombers. The level bombers on this ship are exactly the same way. And well, the rocket planes work like that and so do the torpedo bombers. Because you need this cone to narrow, otherwise you'll hit too few of these torpedoes. However, the high amount of HP on these is very nice because you get to drop, you get to fly over the ship, then drop again. Of course, the enemy is going to be frustrated though because they probably shoot down many fewer planes than before. However, their anti-air damage numbers will be much higher. So we'll, we'll see how the enemies feel about that. But essentially the FDR is very good at dealing damage, especially to big ships. You know, the fire damage gets pretty good because you have HE rockets, you have HE level bombers, and then you also drop a lot of torps, which can cause a fair amount of flooding, although looking at the fact that I have 20 torpedo heads and only one flooding, maybe you don't get that many floodings after all. So I just dropped on that GK while she was somewhat angled, and this is going to be angled as she turns on the uh, map border. And that only meant I hit one torpedo, so you have to line your drops up, otherwise you just don't deal, do much. And I think as people get used to the CV, they will respect it more and just angle against it more often, which probably will mean that her effectiveness is going to drop a little bit at least. But hey, at least here we'll be able to finish off this GK, and then bounce off the map border and go after that Yoshino. Never mind, I guess we don't get to finish off that GK. A Hindenburg did it for, for us instead. So overall, I find this CV to be quite fun to play. This might mean she's overpowered, or it might simply mean that uh, there's stuff still to learn and I feel that she's effective enough. And I mean, at the end of the day, the main strength that the CV has, which is spotting, still exists. So... In terms of organized gameplay, it's going to offer a lot of the same stuff as before. Okay, so I think I'll go after the uh, Montana and Thunder that are pushing with my level bombers, and I should probably move my CV away. The enemy controls three of the four cap zones, and we are behind the ships. It's a six versus eight, I guess. Oh, Richthofen's coming in, but that'll be okay. She isn't dropping on me, she's dropping on the Hindenburg. I could go and try to strike that Hindenburg with the level bombers, but I think it'll be... It doesn't feel nice to use these against um, cruisers, because you have to line up the drop from far away. Not quite as far away as the rocket planes. However, how the ship angles a little bit, you know, turns left or right, this matters a lot. Really do think of the atrocious, I mean again, the audacious. You have to line this drop up properly, otherwise they simply don't deal much damage. I mean, you'll deal some damage, right? Because these are still basically huge bombs that you're dropping. And wow, 18,000 is pretty good. And you can certainly hit higher. I think I've seen uh, clips where somebody hit, I think close to 30k, maybe even 30k. But again, keep in mind that Midway, with her uh, die bombers, can do something like 20k as well. And... Midway dive bombers are much, much easier to use because, again, you have to line these up from far away. You can't do, you know, late stage turning much and, oh my god, I just took flex. I mean, still, I survived with the planes and I can certainly do my strikes, but this is gonna eat into reserves quite heavily. And I think many players are gonna get hit by flak. Defensive fire in those cases is gonna be much, much stronger than against virtually any other CV, because remember, defensive fire, I think quadruples the damage that flak bubbles deal. So if normally your flak bubble deals like 2000 damage, it'll be 8000 or is it 6000? I don't know, but here you saw an example of getting hit by flak and having your entire squadron shut down. And that's gonna happen, that's gonna happen virtually every game that you play in the FDR. Something is gonna land those flak bubbles. Especially when you're dealing with Soviet cruisers or Soviet battleships, because they tend to have more anti-air range, and they also have a lot of flak bubbles. You can't, this also means that they tend to get one extra round of flak bubbles when you try to drop them. And this means that you're much more likely to eat flak from those ships compared to ships like Montana or Thundra. 
which arguably are pretty good against uh, planes anyway. From the competitive side, I think this ship might see some play, but she also might not see play. The reason why I think she might not see play is because she isn't very good against destroyers. It's very difficult for her to deal with TDs. Or to even finish ships off, because she, you know, it's like a sledgehammer. It's very difficult to be delicate or to just finish off some section with it. However, the reason why I think she might see play is because she might be able to attack into heavy anti-air, right? Because she, her planes have so much HP, and you can do the usual maneuvers of trying to dodge flak and all of that. But if you can go through that anti-air, that alone might make her worth it. So we'll have to see how people play her. I suspect that uh, people won't have too much experience with her either, because it's going to be a new steel ship. So a lot of people won't have access, particularly because it'll be a CV as well. So even fewer people are going to be interested in her. Okay, so I guess I'll have to do a thunder attack from the side with the level bombers. And this just isn't going to be very effective, I, I feel. At least usually it hasn't been effective. Okay, actually, no, no, no. This was actually pretty good. I landed four of the eight. Wow. I don't think I've had such a lucky run with the level bombers on the side before. Man, that actually makes Audacious uh, jealous a little bit, huh? Especially because these bombs actually have penetration, so they can actually deal damage. And obviously start fires. Yeah, we're still behind in terms of the match, it's 4 against 5. We have a destroyer as well, so surface ship-wise, we are actually behind. But I think our Holland has played really well this game. Oh, that was a pretty decent hit, because I started the fire... I mean, we didn't deal that much damage, but the uh, attack run lined up properly for me. So let's just try to finish her off with uh, the torpedo bombers now. Although I am a little bit worried about the fact that the sudden Minotaur appeared over there, she might make my plans more difficult. You know, because the Minotaur can add anti-air, and Minotaur also has very good anti-air range. As a result, you get even more flak, but luckily she doesn't have defensive fire, which means that her flak bubbles, I can probably survive taking a few of those flak bubbles. Okay, come on, Thundra. Speaking of flak, again, one of the reasons why I feel that this is kind of how CVs were ought to be is because of flak. Because when I play a Richthofen or a Hakuryu, I just avoid all of the flak, in most cases. It's very rare that I'll get hit by flak in situations where it matters. But in this ship, it happens frequently enough that flak actually seems to be like a mechanic. Also, thank you very much, Thunder, for just deleting that Minotaur. This makes life much easier. Game ends in two minutes. Okay, now I have to make a choice. Do I go after the Richthofen or do I go after the Thundra? One reason to go after the Richthofen is that Talon Torps obviously weren't going to be enough. And I could help with finishing her off. However, on the other hand, I already hit this Thundra. And it should be easier to do this follow-up drop on her. Although she is very maneuverable. And this might make the drop somewhat difficult. It might still work and I can obviously do a third drop as well. Okay, flooding, that's very good. Oh, Zhao finally managed to deal with Hindenburg that crept on the map border. Excellent, well done Zhao. But I didn't really have much worries ab about that because our Zhao had much more HP. Come on, I want to do the drop. And before I could actually get into the drop, the flak bubble hit and unfortunately I took a lot of damage. Usually, you know, you dodge that first flak bubble by simply starting the drop. But here this wasn't possible because the uh, drop hadn't cooled down fast enough. I couldn't start the attack. But anyway, game's over. 40 seconds to go. They only have a Richthofen and the Salem. By the way, that's actually the Salem that I dropped initially. I think because I got her so low HP, she probably wasn't able to play nearly as much as, as she would have liked to. But this was a very heavy damage game for the FDR. I don't think I've had many high damage games like this. I've hit over 200k a fair few times though. But I mean 260k? Not quite there. But here we can see our Haaland and Thunder played very very well this game. And so did our Zaa.
so I'm going to compliment them, and also the Smolensk for dealing with the Z-52. Feel kind of bad for that Salem, you know, he's last on his team, but makes sense, she got down to 600 HP at the start, because her team simply didn't go to the eastern side. The reason I could strike that uh, Hindenburg and Salem so easily is because they were essentially alone over there. I'll also compliment this Puerto Rico, because if you didn't notice, she actually pushed into the middle and kind of was left, uh, left dry on her own, you know. And I feel kind of bad for that, that I didn't try to support her more, so I'll just compliment her for that. And hey, 86k from the fires and floodings. It's not like this ship is some fire-starting machine extraordinaire, so that's kind of additional damage that you might not normally expect. And you can see that a lot of the damage I did to those battleships was fire damage. But the Salem and Hindenburg? These just took alpha damage. The rocket planes are great against cruisers. The torpedo bombers are great against ships that don't pay much attention. And I guess the level bombers are pretty decent overall. So, the ship is strong. And at least in my hands, for random battles, she certainly feels more than adequate. In many cases, I even think that this feels kind of overpowered. But I guess we'll have to see, you know, once players learn how to play against the ship. That is, you know, always angle against her when you can and turn into the torpedoes instead of away and turn even for the rocket planes and all of that. Once people learn to do that, maybe the effectiveness of the ship falls and it's kind of hard to predict how much it'll fall. Also, by the way, I tank damage this game. See, I took 30k damage. That's why we won. So anyways, let's go over the commander skills and upgrades that I used. I did use Halsey in this match, but that didn't match because I couldn't activate the abilities anyway. So commander skills are different than usual. I start out with uh, air supremacy, then for improved engines. Instead of survivability expert, I go for aircraft armor, then site stabilization, and then I go for adrenaline rush because you do take damage when you do your multiple strikes. And then adrenaline rush actually kicks in and is quite useful. Then after that, I go for uh, improved engines, obviously, because engine boost is the most important part of a CV. And last, torpedo acceleration. The reason why is that the torpedoes are actually, they're kind of like midway torpedoes in many ways. So they're slow. 35 knots with this, they go 40 knots. You see, when you do a torpedo attack with CVs, the torpedoes aren't based on time. So whether they're faster or slower doesn't actually make a difference, you know, in the first fr from when you drop. To when you uh, when they arm you'll just have to drop further away with faster torpedoes however once they're armed you know you need to leave some leeway for the ship to turn in or maneuver in some way and that distance torpedo speed does matter and so i feel like the faster tarps just feel kind of better and it fit very nicely into this type of build and then last i take uh, concealment expert i don't take survivability expert even though they give 25 HP per tier to the plane, so 250 HP. But that's because this torpedo bomber has 3690 HP. You know, its survivability expert is much less effective, because they have basically double the HP that midway torpedo bombers have, or almost. Which means that survivability expert on midway is twice as good as it is on the FDR. So I decided not to go for it. Also note that the FDR's uh, uh, level bombers are 128 knots and the rocket planes are 133 knots. Whereas on the midway, they're 173 on the rocket planes. So, you know, the rocket planes on the midway are significantly faster. Anyway, let's go over the upgrades as well, but this is the usual stuff. So obviously flight control modification 2, because you always want more speed, because speed determines how many strikes you get to do. You know, keep one thing in mind, right? Even though the strikes might deal a lot more damage on the ship, something like a Richthofen will get a good 40% more strikes in just because the planes are so much faster. Also, one of the reasons why the torpedo bombers on the Midway appeared slower than on this one is because my Midway isn't set up. Then you take the aircraft restoration time. Then I like the uh, rocket planes. That's why I took rocket plane HP. You might like something else, or maybe something else is better. Keep in mind that none of these planes have a heal, so there's no extra synergy there. In the third slot, I like my attack aircraft time. This means that I get to aim for longer on my 
uh, rocket planes. I kind of like having it, but I think the uh, torpedo speed one is slightly better though. Second slot aircraft engines, because again, more engine boost, and then air groups modification one for faster return. So overall, FDR, I have a lot of fun when playing this ship, because she feels new, and the way she plays is different than other CVs do. As a result, it's really interesting for me. But it's hard for me to say whether she is overpowered or balanced. I can certainly say she's definitely not weak, right? At least in random battle, she's definitely not weak. She's either strong or perhaps overpowered. I just can't make that determination yet. I would need to see other players play the ship more to, you know, get a better sense for it. And, you know, I would like to also be on the receiving end because when a ship like this is being tested, I might play her, but I don't get to be on the surface ship side that actually gets attacked by this. Or at least, well, I've been attacked by a few of these while playing surface ships, but they were kind of uneventful. You know, maybe the CV player just played this for the first time, so they didn't know how or something along those lines. It's hard to tell. So it'll simply take time to get the bearings better, I think. But overall, I enjoy this ship, and I'm certainly going to make more videos of her. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, and I hope I'll see you guys next time.